Vampire's Lover In a forgotten corner of Transylvania, where ancient secrets lay buried beneath layers of earth and time, three adventurous young souls harbored a desire for vengeance. They were united by a shared history and a place that had been their refuge, a place now invaded by archaeologists who had been meticulously unearthing relics for months. These young individuals, fueled by resentment, devised a plan to disrupt the work of the archaeologists and teach them a lesson. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the world was draped in twilight's embrace, they set out to carry out their daring scheme. Their intention was to undermine the efforts of those who had invaded their sanctum, a place they once called their own. With determination and a hint of mischief, they embarked on their mission. Their laughter and hushed whispers mingled with the rustling leaves as they ventured deeper into the heart of the excavation site. The air was thick with anticipation, the thrill of revenge coursing through their veins. However, fate had a different plan in store. As they ventured deeper, their recklessness led to an unforeseen consequence. A wall, weakened by the passage of time, crumbled beneath their touch, revealing a hidden chamber below. In a moment of panic, one of them stumbled, tumbling into the depths of the darkness. Amidst the cold and the shadows, his friends urged him to make his way back to the surface. The echoes of their voices reached him like distant whispers, their urgency a lifeline in the abyss. In his desperation, he groped for anything to aid his ascent. His hand closed around an object a dagger embedded in a forgotten relic. With a surge of strength, he pulled himself back into the world of light, leaving behind the enigmatic chamber. Unbeknownst to him, he had unwittingly disturbed the sleep of an ancient vampire who had slumbered for centuries, ensnared by the passage of time. Returning to the surface, he clung to the dagger, a token of his escape from the depths below. His friends cheered his return, but his eyes held a haunted gaze, haunted by the echoes of something primal and powerful that had stirred in the darkness. As the night wore on and the stars painted the sky with their brilliant tapestry, his thoughts remained clouded by dark suspicions. He couldn't shake the feeling that something had been awakened, something that had slumbered beneath the earth, waiting for an opportunity to rise. In the shadows of the night, ancient secrets began to stir, and the echoes of a history long forgotten whispered of mysteries yet to be unveiled. Vladimir awoke from his long slumber, his eyes adjusting to the blinding brightness of a new world. The familiar stone walls of his crypt were replaced by sleek surfaces and intricate designs he could hardly comprehend. Gone were the ominous whispers of the night and the chilling howls of wolves, instead, the distant hum of machines and the bustling sounds of a vibrant city greeted his ears. Stunned and disoriented, he rose from his ancient resting place and stepped cautiously into this brave new realm. The air smelled different, tinged with unfamiliar scents that hinted at the passage of time. Vladimir's heart, though eternally frozen, quickened with a mix of awe and trepidation as he ventured forth. Amidst this backdrop, the figure of Vladimir emerged not as the renowned master of Transylvania and Eastern Europe, but as a complete stranger in an unknown world. The power and dominion he had once commanded had faded into obscurity, leaving him to navigate a landscape that was both foreign and bewildering. Vladimir, once feared and revered, now stood on the cusp of a new journey, one that would test his abilities and shape his destiny in ways he could never have foreseen. 
As Vladimir navigated the bustling streets, he felt like an alien in a foreign land. People hurried past, their faces buried in strange devices that emitted a soft glow. Vehicles zipped by, propelled by forces he couldn't fathom. The world had evolved into something beyond his wildest nightmares, a labyrinth of concrete and glass that seemed to defy the very laws of nature. Vladimir's boots echoed softly against the pavement as he walked along the unfamiliar road, his mind still trying to grasp the enormity of the world he had awakened to. The sights and sounds were so different from the ancient Transylvanian landscape he remembered. Neon signs adorned towering structures, and strange vehicles whizzed by, their engines emitting a low, steady hum. Lost in his thoughts, Vladimir's attention was suddenly drawn to a commotion in a nearby corner. As he approached, his keen senses caught the scent of blood mingling with the acrid smell of fuel. There, lying on the ground, was a young man, his body bruised and battered, a painful groan escaping his lips. A sense of bewilderment and indignation washed over Vladimir. In the world he had known, even the most hardened souls would offer aid to a fellow traveler in need. But here, amidst the bustling modernity, a sea of indifferent faces passed by without a second glance. Kneeling beside the injured man, Vladimir's crimson eyes scanned the surroundings, seeking any sign of assistance. His gaze met the vacant stares of passers-by, each consumed by their own hurried lives. What world is this? he muttered to himself, his voice laced with a mixture of disbelief and concern. With a gentle touch, Vladimir examined the young man's injuries, his fingers cool against the warmth of human skin. The injuries were serious, and the man's heartbeat was faint but steady. Vladimir's heart raced as he carried the injured young man to a secluded corner of the nearby forest. The urgency of the situation pushed aside any hesitation or doubt. With careful precision, he gently laid the wounded stranger on the cool ground, the moonlight casting an ethereal glow upon their figures. As the young man's breaths grew shallower, Vladimir's instincts took over. His centuries-old fangs elongated, gleaming with an otherworldly intensity. Without a second thought, he lowered his head, his lips brushing against the man's neck. In that heart-stopping moment, he felt the man's pulse against his lips, a lifeline that pulsed with desperate vitality. A surge of conflicted emotions washed over Vladimir. Was it his primal hunger that drove him, or was it a deep-seated desire to save a life? The distinction blurred as his fangs pierced the man's skin, the rush of warm blood flooding his senses. For a fleeting moment, he closed his eyes, lost in the sensation and the weight of the choices he was making. Time seemed to stand still as Vladimir drank, his instincts and compassion intertwining in a dance of contradictions. As the man's body gradually responded, his groans of pain gave way to gasps of awakening consciousness. Vladimir's senses remained acutely attuned to every heartbeat, every breath, ensuring that his actions did not lead to harm. As the young man's eyelids fluttered open, their eyes met in a profound and intimate connection. Vladimir released his hold, his fangs retracting as he slowly withdrew. The forest seemed to hold its breath, the stillness broken only by the rustling leaves and the distant sounds of the city. Gently cradling the man's weakened form, Vladimir's voice, a velvety whisper, carried the weight of his intentions. Rest, my friend, he murmured, 
his words laced with an unspoken promise of protection and care. As the night continued its silent passage, Vladimir remained by the man's side, a silent guardian watching over his recovery. In this solitary corner of the forest, two souls found themselves intertwined by a series of fateful events, their destinies forever linked by a single act of salvation. In the days that followed the fateful encounter, a complex tapestry of emotions unfolded between Michael, the young man who had been saved, and Vladimir. Hatred and confusion wrestled with gratitude and curiosity, creating a tumultuous inner struggle within Michael. The memory of the initial bite haunted him, a visceral reminder of vulnerability and fear. As Michael grappled with these conflicting feelings, Vladimir remained a steadfast presence in his life, offering guidance and support in navigating the intricacies of the modern world. With each passing day, Michael came to realize that his initial resentment towards Vladimir was tempered by a deep appreciation for the unique perspective the ancient vampire could offer. Vladimir, in turn, found himself drawn to Michael's resilience and determination. The young man's ability to adapt to this unfamiliar era inspired a renewed sense of purpose within Vladimir. The centuries-old vampire recognized that he too had much to learn in this bizarre world, and Michael became an unexpected ally in his quest for understanding. Vladimir and Michael embarked on a quest to find old family properties, seeking a place where they could establish themselves in this modern world. Vladimir's memories of hidden sanctuaries and secluded castles provided a starting point, while Michael's resourcefulness and determination proved invaluable in their search. One day, as they explored a dilapidated mansion hidden amidst overgrown foliage, Vladimir surveyed the crumbling structure with a mixture of nostalgia and skepticism. Ah, this place holds memories of a time long past, he mused, his voice tinged with an air of ancient wisdom. Michael raised an eyebrow, glancing around at the decaying walls. Memories, huh? I think the only thing this place remembers is how to collect dust. Vladimir chuckled, a rare glimmer of amusement dancing in his eyes. True, my friend. But with a bit of effort and perhaps a few modern amenities, I believe we can turn this into a suitable abode. As they delved deeper into their mission, Michael took on the role of technological guide, introducing Vladimir to the marvels of the modern age. The two would often sit huddled around a laptop, with Michael enthusiastically explaining the intricacies of the internet and various gadgets. Now, Vladimir, this here is a smartphone, Michael explained, holding up a sleek device. You can use it to make calls, send messages, browse the internet, and even play games. Vladimir examined the device with a mixture of fascination and bewilderment. A device that fits in the palm of your hand and holds the power of countless ancient tomes? Truly, the world has transformed. Michael grinned. You got it. And this, he continued, holding up a remote control, is for the television. You can watch movies, shows, and even access news from around the world. Vladimir peered at the remote, pressing a button experimentally. The television screen flickered to life, displaying a colorful advertisement. A window into distant lands and realms, all contained within the small box. Remarkable. Their technological escapades often led to amusing exchanges, as Vladimir attempted to grasp the nuances of this new era. 
One evening, while attempting to use a voice-activated virtual assistant, Vladimir's frustration reached a comical peak. Speak clearly and enunciate, Vladimir, Michael advised, stifling a laugh. Vladimir narrowed his eyes at the device. Very well. Hey, virtual assistant, where dost thou hidest the secrets of eternal life? The virtual assistant responded with a cheerful, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Michael burst into laughter, and even Vladimir couldn't help but crack a smile. It appears the secrets of immortality remain beyond the reach of technology, my friend. With time, Vladimir and Michael's efforts bore fruit, and they found themselves on the cusp of creating a new life in the modern world. Their journey led them to the outskirts of Brashov, where Vladimir oversaw the construction of a magnificent palace, a blend of old-world grandeur and contemporary comfort. As the palace neared completion, Vladimir's thirst for knowledge led him to an unexpected decision. Determined to understand the advancements in medicine and biology, he enrolled at Transylvania University, much to the surprise of his friend. How he managed to become a student without an exam or rich without working, there's no need to remind you, we all know his powers of coercion and persuasion as a vampire. The professor introduced the day's topic advancements in blood transfusion technology. Vladimir's attention sharpened, his own connection to blood giving him a unique perspective. Raising his hand, Vladimir spoke with a measured tone, his voice carrying the weight of centuries. Could you elaborate on the challenges and breakthroughs in preserving and transfusing blood over extended periods of time? The professor blinked in surprise clearly taken aback by the question's depth. As the class progressed, Vladimir's inquiries and insights revealed his profound understanding of the subject matter, blurring the line between student and scholar. Outside of class, Vladimir's endeavors led him to the halls of local hospitals, where he engaged medical professionals in discussions about the intricacies of blood supply and transfusion techniques. His innate knowledge, combined with his passion for learning, garnered the respect of doctors and nurses who were intrigued by the enigmatic figure's thirst for modern medical knowledge. In another period, before his immortal existence, Vladimir had walked a path of diverse pursuits. He had been a doctor, a healer whose skills transcended the boundaries of conventional medicine. His knowledge and expertise had been honed over the years, his experiences granting him a deep understanding of the human body and its intricacies. As an architect, he had contributed to the creation of structures that stood as testaments to his creativity and vision. The buildings he designed bore the mark of his ingenuity, blending aesthetics with functionality in ways that left a lasting impact on the landscapes they adorned. But his journey did not end there. Vladimir had also taken on roles as a teacher, a scholar, and a philosopher. The passage of time had afforded him the opportunity to delve into a plethora of disciplines, acquiring wisdom that stretched across centuries. He had become a wellspring of knowledge, drawing from his varied experiences to shape his understanding of the world. Vladimir's presence had become a familiar sight in the hospital corridors, his inquisitive nature and thirst for knowledge drawing him to various facets of the medical world. One day, as he made his way through a bustling hallway, his eyes fell upon a figure that seemed to radiate a unique charm amid the control chaos. Katerina, a nurse burdened with an armful of medical instruments, 
moved with a determination that caught Vladimir's attention. Her big blue eyes shone with a mix of focus and exhaustion, and the two long, golden tails that flowed behind her added an unexpected touch of elegance to her otherwise mundane task. Intrigued, Vladimir's gaze followed her as she navigated the hospital's maze-like corridors. His footsteps carried him closer, and as he observed her struggles, he couldn't help but be captivated by the grace and resilience with which she carried herself. Approaching her discreetly, Vladimir's voice was a soft undertone amidst the hospital's hum. Excuse me, miss. It seems you could use an extra pair of hands. Startled, Katerina glanced up, her eyes widening as they met Vladimir's intense gaze. She hesitated for a moment, uncertainty flickering across her features, before a grateful smile curved her lips. I would appreciate that. These instruments can be quite cumbersome. As they worked together, their initial awkwardness gradually melted away. Vladimir's presence, once shrouded in mystery, now felt strangely comforting to Katerina. His movements were fluid and precise, matching the rhythm of her tasks with uncanny ease. Amidst the hospital's controlled chaos, their conversations flowed naturally. Occasional glances turned into lingering gazes, their eyes locking for moments that felt both fleeting and eternal. An unspoken understanding seemed to pass between them, the intensity of their connection growing with every shared exchange. But as the air seemed to thicken with an unspoken tension, a sudden noise broke their reverie. A clatter echoed through the corridor as an instrument slipped from Katerina's grasp and hit the floor, interrupting their silent communion. Startled, they both turned their attention to the fallen object, the spell momentarily broken. Vladimir's voice, calm and composed, cut through the residual tension. Accidents happen, he remarked softly, his gaze lingering on her before returning to the task at hand. Katerina offered a sheepish smile, a hint of color gracing her cheeks. Yes, they do. Thank you for your help. I appreciate it. Curiosity sparked within Vladimir's eyes, his interest genuine as he inquired, so... What exactly do you do here? Katerina's expression shifted from embarrassment to a more animated enthusiasm. I'm a medical student, she explained, her voice carrying a hint of pride. I volunteer here as a nurse during my free hours. It's a way for me to gain practical experience while also helping out. Vladimir's response was a subtle nod, his gaze holding a touch of admiration. A noble pursuit, he said with a genuine smile. A win for those who are fortunate enough to be touched by your care. Her cheeks colored once more, this time from the unexpected compliment. The simplicity of his words touched her, his acknowledgement of her efforts making her feel seen in a way she hadn't anticipated. As they resumed their tasks, the hospital's corridors seemed to shift around them. Amidst the quiet moments of shared work, Katerina and Vladimir began to uncover the layers of their respective lives, a connection forming between two souls who had crossed paths in the most unexpected of places. As Vladimir walked away from his encounter with Katerina, his thoughts were a tempest of conflicting emotions. The familiarity he felt with her had stirred memories he had long buried, echoing a connection that spanned centuries. 
Katerina's presence had ignited a spark of familiarity within him, a sense of deja vu that whispered of long-forgotten chapters. Her face, her gestures, they bore a striking resemblance to the love of his life from the distant past. The echoes of laughter and shared moments pierced his consciousness as vividly as if it were yesterday. Vladimir closed his eyes, lost in the memories of a love that had transcended the constraints of time. He had known love in its purest form, a love that had been both his salvation and his curse. As the night's embrace deepened, Vladimir's emotions were a tempest of conflicting feelings, the ache of loss mingling with the spark of hope that had been rekindled by Katerina's presence. Katerina, lost in her own thoughts, made her way homeward. The encounter with Vladimir had left an indelible mark on her heart, an unexpected pull that defied reason. She couldn't help but feel drawn to him even as the looming prospect of her upcoming marriage weighed heavily on her mind. Katerina's heart was a battleground of conflicting emotions. John, her childhood friend and first love, had always been a constant presence in her life. He was the one who had stood by her side through thick and thin, the one who knew her secrets and dreams. Yet, the encounter with Vladimir had ignited a spark of intrigue that she couldn't ignore. His mysterious aura and the unexplainable familiarity she felt around him tugged at her curiosity, daring her to venture into the unknown. As she walked along the dimly lit streets, her thoughts were a tumultuous storm. Should she cast aside the uncharted territory of her feelings for Vladimir and embrace the safety of her relationship with John? After all, John was the one who had always been there, the one who had loved her when they were young, and the one she had promised to marry. But Vladimir's presence, shrouded in enigma, whispered promises of a connection that transcended time itself. His penetrating gaze had touched a chord within her, unraveling layers of her heart she had never explored. As she resumed her walk, Katerina's steps were firmer, her determination unwavering. She thought of her family's tailor shop, the dresses she lovingly crafted, and the life she had envisioned with John. Her heartache began to recede, buried beneath layers of logic and practicality. In the quiet of the night, Katerina's inner turmoil gradually subsided, replaced by a newfound resolve. The echoes of Vladimir's gaze, once tantalizing and mysterious, were relegated to the realm of fleeting encounters. She had a future to consider, and she wouldn't allow herself to be swayed by a momentary distraction. The hushed tranquility of the night was momentarily shattered by the sound of Katerina's phone ringing. She glanced at the screen to see John's name flashing, his call breaking through her reverie. With a quick inhale, she answered the call, her voice carrying a note of warmth and familiarity. Hey, John, she said, her heartstrings tugging at the sound of his voice. Hey, Katerina, he replied, excitement evident in his tone. I've got a surprise for you. Can we meet up? Katerina's heart clenched at the unexpected invitation, torn between her loyalty to John and the swirling emotions within her. She thought quickly, her mind grasping for an excuse that would spare John's feelings. I wish I could, but I can't tonight, she replied, a touch of regret coloring her words. My mother needs my help to finish a dress for an important client. You know how our little tailor shop can get. 
There was a pause on the other end of the line, and Katerina's heart ached at the disappointment she sensed in John's silence. Ah, I understand, he finally said, his voice tinged with a hint of sadness. Well, I hope everything goes well with the dress. Let's catch up soon, all right? Katerina's chest tightened, guilt gnawing at her. Of course, John. We'll definitely catch up soon. Take care. As the call ended, Katerina let out a sigh, her heart heavy with conflicting emotions. Her family's tailor shop was her refuge, a place where she poured her passion and creativity into crafting beautiful garments. Yet, it also served as a convenient shield, allowing her to navigate the complexities of her feelings for both John and Vladimir. The moon cast a gentle glow upon the quiet streets as Katerina continued her solitary walk lost in her thoughts, she was unaware of the uneven pavement that lay ahead. In an unfortunate twist of fate, her foot caught on a hidden obstacle, causing her to stumble and fall. Pain shot through Katerina's leg as she let out a startled cry. She clutched her injured limb, her heart racing as she struggled to regain her composure. The world around her seemed to blur, and her breaths came in ragged gasps as the throbbing ache intensified. Just as despair began to take hold, a shadowy figure emerged from the darkness. Vladimir, who had been watching from a distance, appeared with a swiftness that defied human capabilities. His vampire speed carried him to Katerina's side in an instant, his eyes filled with concern as he assessed the situation. Katerina, are you all right? he asked urgently, his voice a soothing balm against the turmoil of the moment. Katerina's gaze met his, a mixture of surprise and relief flooding her features. Vladimir? How did you? He offered her a reassuring smile, his fingers gently brushing against her injured leg. There's no time to explain now. Let me help you. With a graceful fluidity, Vladimir scooped Katerina into his arms, cradling her with a strength that belied his elegant demeanor. Her heart raced as she realized the truth, the man was more than he seemed. I owe you my gratitude, Katerina finally managed to say, her voice tinged with both wonder and gratitude. You appeared just when I needed help the most. Vladimir's gaze held a warmth that seemed to transcend time itself. It was my privilege to assist you, Katerina. Your safety is of utmost importance. Vladimir carried Katerina in his arms, his steps effortless as he navigated the quiet streets with a grace that defied the ordinary. Katerina clung to him, both for support and in a sense of awe at his strength and speed. The distance to her home seemed to evaporate under Vladimir's otherworldly speed, and soon they arrived at her doorstep. Katerina's voice trembled slightly as she recounted the accident, sharing the challenges her family had faced in their small tailor shop. Her words painted a picture of perseverance and sacrifice, of deaths looming like shadows over their lives. She spoke of how she was their pillar of strength, their beacon of hope. Katerina's heart raced as she caught sight of her mother, her face etched with concern and relief as she opened the door. Katerina, dear, what happened? Are you all right? Vladimir's presence was a striking contrast to the ordinary world, yet he waited with an air of respect for the invitation to enter. 
Her mother's eyes welled with tears, a mixture of pride and concern filling her gaze. Oh, my dear Katerina, you've always been our guiding light. Turning her attention to Vladimir, Katerina's mother extended a grateful smile. Thank you for bringing my daughter home safely. We are truly in your debt. Vladimir inclined his head with a gracious nod, his aura exuding a quiet dignity. It was my privilege to ensure Katerina's well-being. May I have your permission to step inside, to ensure she's comfortable? The invitation extended, Vladimir stepped over the threshold, his presence commanding yet respectful. The ambience of the humble abode seemed to shift, as if the echoes of history and time itself recognized his entry. However, as Katerina and Vladimir entered, a tension hung in the air. John, who had been waiting with a surprise, stood with an expression that was a mixture of concern and something else jealousy. His eyes narrowed as they fell upon Vladimir, his voice laced with an undercurrent of hostility. Katerina, what on earth happened? John's words dripped with disbelief, his attention less on her injured leg and more on the enigmatic figure at her side. And who is this? Katerina's heart sank at the change in John's demeanor. She felt a pang of unease, realizing that the presence of Vladimir had ignited a spark of jealousy within him. Vladimir remained composed, his gaze meeting John's with a calm that belied the tension in the room. I am Vladimir, and I was fortunate enough to be nearby when Katerina had her accident. I ensured she made it home safely. John's jealousy simmered beneath the surface, and his tone turned curt. Well, that's very kind of you, Vladimir. But Katerina, I think it's best if you rest and recover. We can catch up another time. The sun began to cast its golden rays upon the world, signaling the arrival of a new day. In the quiet solitude of the morning, Michael ventured into the chamber where he often found Vladimir lost in thought. His footsteps were tentative, uncertainty tugging at his heart as he approached his enigmatic companion. Vladimir, seated by the window with a contemplative gaze, acknowledged Michael's presence with a nod. The air held a sense of weightiness, as if unspoken thoughts and emotions lingered in the space between them. Master, Michael began hesitantly, his voice a cautious whisper. Is there something you wish to discuss? Vladimir turned his gaze towards Michael, his expression a mixture of contemplation and determination. The words that followed were unexpected, cutting through the silence with a startling clarity. Michael, I need your help. I must conquer Katerina, and I need you by my side to achieve this. Michael's eyes widened in surprise, a mixture of shock and confusion playing across his features. But master, you possess powers beyond mortal comprehension. You could have any woman you desire with a mere thought. Why would you need assistance? Vladimir's gaze held a depth of emotion that caught Michael off guard. It's different now, Michael. I've lived through centuries, seen kingdoms rise and fall, I want to be loved as I am, not as a supernatural entity. I want her to see me for who I am beneath the veneer of power and immortality. The sincerity in Vladimir's voice was palpable, a longing that resonated with Michael's own understanding of the complexities of the human heart. 
He contemplated his words, realizing the profound transformation that had taken hold of his ancient companion. You wish to be loved for your essence, not your abilities, Michael mused, his own voice tinged with a mixture of awe and compassion. Vladimir nodded, a ghost of a smile playing on his lips. Yes, Michael. And I believe that Katerina may be the one to offer me that chance. But I cannot do it alone. I need your guidance, your insights into the world that has evolved in my absence. As the morning light bathed the room, Michael's hesitation gave way to a renewed sense of purpose. He understood the depth of Vladimir's yearning, the desire to experience a love that transcended time and power. With a determined nod, he placed his hand on Vladimir's shoulder. I will stand by your side, Master, and help you navigate this path. Together, we will unveil the man you've become and perhaps, in the process, find the love you've sought for so long. Vladimir's chamber was adorned with flickering candles, casting an intimate glow upon his surroundings. His quill moved gracefully across the parchment, crafting verses that conveyed the depths of his feelings for Katerina. Each word was carefully chosen, a reflection of his longing and his desire to reveal his true self to her. In the moon's gentle embrace, I find my solace, a love that transcends time and space. In your gaze, I see a reflection of eternity, a connection that defies the realms of reality. From ancient shadows to the present day, my heart yearns for a chance to convey the depths of emotion that reside within, a love that's boundless, a story to begin. Yet I tread softly, mindful of your grace, a tender flame, a delicate embrace. For in your eyes, a world I see anew, a journey to explore, a love that's true. So let us walk together, side by side, through life's unfolding tapestry wide. In your laughter and your sighs, I'll find my home, my paradise. Let not my words overwhelm or sway, but gently guide us on love's path each day. With every beat of our hearts entwined, may our souls unite, destiny designed. As he finished composing the verses, he turned to Michael with a sense of anticipation. Michael, I've written these verses for Katerina. I believe they capture the essence of my feelings. What do you think? Michael's gaze softened, and he took a moment to read the heartfelt verses. After a thoughtful pause, he offered his perspective. Master, the sentiment behind these verses is undoubtedly genuine, but in today's world, such grand gestures might come across as overwhelming. It's important to consider that Katerina might be taken aback or even frightened by such intensity. Vladimir's brow furrowed, his features a mask of uncertainty. I see your point, Michael. So, what do you suggest? Michael leaned forward, his expression earnest. Perhaps a more subtle approach would be better suited for the present day. Instead of sending verses, why not invite her on a casual date? Spend time together, engage in light conversation, and allow her to get to know you naturally. This way, you can show her the real you without overwhelming her. Vladimir contemplated Michael's advice, realizing the wisdom in his words. A casual date, you say? It sounds foreign to me, but I'm willing to try. How should I go about inviting her? 
Michael smiled warmly. Think of a place that she might enjoy a cozy cafe, a park, or even a museum. And when you approach her, be genuine and sincere. Express your interest in getting to know her better, and let the conversation flow naturally. Vladimir nodded, a sense of determination taking root. Very well, Michael. I'll take your advice to heart. A casual date it shall be. The next day dawned with a mixture of uncertainty and curiosity in Katerina's heart. The memory of Vladimir's unexpected presence lingered, casting a shadow of intrigue over her thoughts. She went about her day, her movements slightly hurried, trying to make sense of the enigmatic encounter. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the world embraced the soothing embrace of night, Katerina's thoughts returned to the events of the previous evening. The pain in her legs served as a constant reminder of the support Vladimir had offered, his strength a stark contrast to her vulnerability. She couldn't help but wonder about his intentions. How had he held her with such tenderness and care? Could there be more to his actions than met the eye? A myriad of questions swirled in her mind, each one a puzzle piece in the larger picture of the enigmatic Vladimir. The darkness of the night seemed to amplify her introspection, the moon's soft glow casting a contemplative atmosphere around her. Katerina found herself lost in thoughts of the man who had appeared out of nowhere, a stranger who had stepped into her life with an air of mystery. Had he been following her? The thought nodded her, and a hint of unease settled in her heart. The idea of being watched, even with benevolent intentions, stirred a mix of apprehension and curiosity. She questioned whether Vladimir's presence was mere coincidence or something more deliberate. As Katerina continued to navigate the labyrinth of her thoughts, the pain in her legs seemed to mirror the ache within her heart. She longed for clarity, for a deeper understanding of the man who had entered her life so unexpectedly. Yet, the path ahead remained shrouded in uncertainty, the answers to her questions elusive in the midst of the night's quietude. With each passing moment, Katerina's connection with Vladimir became a puzzle that begged to be solved, a mystery that danced on the edge of her consciousness. The day wore on, and Katerina found herself in the company of John, her childhood friend and fiancé. However, the atmosphere between them had grown strained, tainted by the undercurrent of jealousy that had emerged since Vladimir's appearance. Throughout the day, John's questions about Vladimir became increasingly uncomfortable, his probing insinuations casting a shadow over their interactions. As they sat together, the tension in the room was palpable. Katerina's patience wore thin, her frustration mounting with each intrusive question. She had hoped for understanding and support from John, but his words only served to fan the flames of her uncertainty and unease. Finally, unable to contain her exasperation any longer, Katerina's voice rose in a mixture of anger and hurt. John, enough! I can't take this constant questioning about Vladimir anymore. It's making me uncomfortable, and I won't stand for it. John's eyes widened in surprise at the force of her words, his own frustration evident on his face. Katerina, I'm just trying to understand. This Vladimir guy comes out of nowhere, and suddenly you're acting like he's the center of your world. Katerina's gaze hardened, 
her voice unwavering as she asserted herself. He's not the center of my world, John. But he did help me when I needed it, and his presence has left an impact. I won't apologize for that. The room fell silent, the weight of their emotions hanging in the air. Katerina's heart ached at the realization that the one she had turned to for comfort had become a source of tension. She longed for understanding and empathy, but John's jealousy had clouded their connection. With a heavy sigh, Katerina stood, her voice softer but no less resolute. I need some time alone, John. Please, just leave me be for now. John's expression softened, a mixture of regret and frustration crossing his features. He nodded, his voice tinged with a touch of remorse. Fine, Katerina. Take the time you need. I'll be here when you're ready to talk. Katerina watched as John left the room, her heart heavy with a sense of longing and disappointment. Driven by a burning curiosity to learn more about Katerina, Vladimir embarked on a journey to her home under the guise of a seemingly innocuous errand. He arrived at her doorstep, a carefully crafted pretext at the ready. With the air of a gentleman, he greeted her mother warmly, his demeanor poised and charming. As the door opened to welcome him, he made mention of needing a luxurious dress for a relative special occasion. Vladimir's words were smooth and practiced, painting a picture of opulence and sophistication. He spoke of a unique red dress that would befit the occasion, capturing the attention of Katerina's mother. The matriarch of the household listened intently, her eyes brightening at the prospect of creating such a masterpiece. She acknowledged the potential cost of such a creation, cautious about the financial implications it might hold. Vladimir's response was confident and unequivocal, as he assured her that cost would not be an issue. The most expensive dress of its kind, he proclaimed, a note of assurance lacing his words. Money is of no concern. Her mother's eyebrows lifted in surprise, her curiosity piqued by his apparent generosity. As the conversation flowed, Vladimir dropped a subtle hint that revealed his deeper intentions. For the perfect fit, I'd suggest using Katerina's dimensions, he suggested, a glint of purpose in his eyes. The unspoken connection between them had led Vladimir to take this unexpected step. He sensed that Katerina's mother might hold the key to unlocking the secrets of her daughter's heart, and he was willing to pay any price to learn more. Aware of the gravity of his words, Katerina's mother regarded him with newfound respect. That's quite the offer, young man, she mused, a smile tugging at her lips. But such work demands payment up front, especially for one as unique as this. Vladimir's response was swift and decisive, a reflection of his determination. He pulled out a sum that far exceeded the ordinary, a gesture that spoke volumes about his intentions. His actions left her mother momentarily speechless, her mind racing to comprehend the magnitude of the offer. Seeing the amazement on her face, he gently explained, Consider it a token of my appreciation for Katerina's assistance. Despite the astonishment, her mother understood the depth of his meaning. The connection between Vladimir and Katerina had not gone unnoticed, and his words were laden with a significance that transcended material wealth. With a mixture of gratitude and acceptance, 
she conceded. Very well. The measurements shall be taken using my daughter's dimensions. Before departing, Vladimir expressed his desire to see how Katerina was faring. Her mother granted him permission, a glimmer of warmth in her eyes as she recognized the sincerity of his concern. Vladimir stepped into Katerina's home, his gaze scanning the surroundings with a mix of curiosity and genuine concern. He found her sitting on a comfortable chair, her leg propped up and wrapped in bandages. As their eyes met, he offered a reassuring smile, hoping to ease her discomfort. Good evening, Katerina, he greeted, his voice laced with a hint of warmth. What? About your leg? How are you feeling? Katerina managed a small smile, appreciating his visit. It's been a bit of a challenge, but I'm hanging in there, she replied, her voice tinged with a touch of humor. Well, how about we try to make this situation a bit more entertaining? With a flourish, he reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out a vibrant clown's nose. The plastic appendage was bright red and adorned with playful polka dots. Katerina's eyes widened in surprise, a laugh escaping her lips at the unexpected sight. What on earth? Vladimir's expression was nothing short of theatrical as he donned the clown's nose, his demeanor transforming in an instant. Laughter is the best medicine, they say, he quipped, his tone melodramatic as he struck a pose. Katerina burst into laughter, unable to contain her amusement. I must admit, this is not the usual sight I encounter in my living room. Grinning beneath the clown's nose, Vladimir took a bow. Well, I aim to provide unique experiences. The playful banter continued, and as they exchanged light-hearted jests, Vladimir's eyes landed on Katerina's wrapped leg. With an expression of concern, he lowered himself to a crouch beside her, his gaze fixed on her leg as if examining it like a curious child. May I? he asked, extending a hand toward her leg with an exaggerated air of hesitancy. Katerina chuckled, nodding. Sure, go ahead. I suppose laughter isn't the only medicine we're trying today. With exaggerated delicacy, Vladimir reached out and placed his hands gently on either side of her leg. His face bore an expression of utmost concentration, his brows furrowed as if he were channeling his inner healer. He mimicked a few movements as if performing an ancient and mysterious ritual to heal her leg. Katerina couldn't help but giggle at his antics. And what kind of healing technique is this, Dr. Vladimir? He straightened up, his expression turning from mock seriousness to a playful grin. Ah, you've uncovered the secrets of my renowned leg healing dance. It's an ancient art, you see. Katerina laughed her eyes sparkling with mirth. Well, Dr. Vladimir, I must say you've managed to make my day significantly more interesting. As their laughter echoed through the room, the tension of the moment seemed to dissolve, replaced by an atmosphere of camaraderie and shared joy. As the sounds of lively laughter filled the hallway, John's return was met with an unexpected and bewildering scene. He stood frozen in the doorway, his heart sinking as he took in the sight before him. Katerina was engaged in playful banter with none other than Vladimir, the man whose presence seemed to cast a shadow over his own standing in her life. 
Unable to contain the surge of jealousy that coursed through him, John's emotions boiled over. Without a word, he lunged forward, his fists flying in a blind fury aimed at Vladimir. The attack was swift and aggressive, driven by a consuming jealousy that had festered within him. Vladimir, however, was not taken off guard. His reflexes were swift and honed by centuries of existence. He deftly avoided John's punches, sidestepping and gracefully evading each blow. The hallway transformed into a chaotic dance of aggression and evasion, their movements a stark contrast to the laughter that had filled the air just moments ago. In a moment of misjudgment, as John's fury propelled him forward, he struck his head against the doorframe with a resounding thud. Pain seared through him, and a yelp of agony escaped his lips. Bruising around his eye began to form, the physical pain mirroring the emotional turmoil that had driven him to this point. Vladimir, now composed and calm, stood a short distance away, his posture poised and unwavering. He watched as John grappled with both his physical pain and the realization of what he had done. The hallway fell silent, the tension palpable as the trio confronted the aftermath of this unexpected confrontation. With a heavy sigh, Vladimir spoke softly, his voice carrying a note of resignation. I believe it's best if I take my leave. Without waiting for a response, he turned and departed, leaving behind an atmosphere heavy with unspoken emotions. Katerina and John were left to face the aftermath of the altercation, the echoes of laughter replaced by the weight of their unresolved issues. As the door closed behind Vladimir, they stood in a silence that seemed to reverberate with the echoes of their own feelings a mixture of jealousy, insecurity, and the complex web of emotions that had brought them to this juncture. The atmosphere in the room became charged with tension as Katerina and John's discussion escalated into a heated argument. The weight of their unspoken issues and the jealousy that had been simmering beneath the surface fueled the flames of their disagreement. As emotions reached a boiling point, John's frustration transformed into verbal aggression. His words were sharp, cutting through the air with a venomous intensity that echoed the storm within him. The hurt that had driven him to jealousy now manifested as anger, a tempestuous force that seemed to consume reason and compassion. In a moment of alarming escalation, John's aggression crossed a line he had never dared to cross before. His frustration and anger compelled him to raise his hand, a threatening gesture that hung in the air like a storm cloud on the brink of unleashing its fury. Just as the situation teetered on the precipice of violence, a sudden intrusion shattered the charged atmosphere. Katerina's mother entered the room, her presence a stark contrast to the chaos that had unfolded. Her eyes blazed with a mix of concern and indignation as she took in the scene before her. John, she said sternly, her voice holding a weight that burped no argument. I think it's best if you leave this room immediately. The gravity of her words seemed to momentarily snap John out of his anger-induced trance. He hesitated, his gaze flickering between Katerina's mother and the chaos he had helped create. Her mother's expression did not waver her resolve unwavering. Now. The single word hung in the air like an unspoken ultimatum. It was a command that left no room for negotiation. Reluctantly, John complied, his shoulders slumping as he exited the room, his footsteps heavy with the weight of his actions. 
As the door closed behind him, the room was left in an aftermath of tension and shattered emotions. Katerina and her mother exchanged a look that spoke volumes a shared understanding of the need to address the issues at hand and a determination to navigate the storm that had swept through their lives. Katerina's recovery had been steady, and she finally found herself back at the university. One day, as she walked through the bustling halls of the faculty, she felt a familiar presence nearby. Turning a corner, her gaze met Vladimir's, and a smile tugged at the corners of her lips. It appeared that fate had brought them together once again, this time within the confines of a classroom. Their eyes met in a silent exchange, and Katerina couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie. It was as if their connection extended beyond the ordinary, transcending the confines of time and circumstance. The class began, and Katerina found herself seated among her peers, her attention divided between the lecture and the enigmatic figure who sat a few rows away. The teacher's voice filled the room as he delved into the subject matter, and Katerina listened attentively. Suddenly, as if sensing an opportunity, the teacher turned his gaze toward Katerina. Miss Katerina, he addressed her, his tone challenging. Could you please explain the concept of genetic variation in medicine? Katerina felt a momentary panic as the question was fired in her direction. Genetic variation wasn't the easiest topic, and the complexity of the question caught her off guard. She hesitated, her mind racing for an answer. Just as uncertainty began to settle in, Vladimir's voice cut through the tension. Ah! Genetic variation in medicine, he interjected with a casual confidence that commanded attention. The teacher's eyebrows lifted, clearly surprised by Vladimir's interruption. Mr. Vladimir, please enlighten us. Vladimir leaned forward slightly, his expression a mixture of amusement and authority. Genetic variation refers to the differences in the DNA sequence among individuals within a population. In the context of medicine, understanding genetic variation is crucial because it can influence how individuals respond to diseases, medications, and treatments. He continued, for example, Think of a puzzle each person's genetic makeup is like a unique piece of that puzzle. Just as different puzzle pieces fit together in various ways, genetic variations can affect how our bodies process drugs, our susceptibility to certain diseases, and even how we metabolize nutrients. Vladimir's explanation was met with nods of understanding from the students and even a few impressed murmurs. The teacher, however, seemed taken aback by the clarity and confidence with which Vladimir had responded. A faint sense of unease seemed to settle over him as he cleared his throat and attempted to regain his footing. I see, the teacher mumbled, his gaze shifting as he struggled to find the words. Yes, genetic variation is indeed important. Because. Well, you see, it's, um. It's like the spices in a recipe. Yes, just as different spices can change the flavor of a dish, genetic variations can, uh, change the way our bodies react to, um, medical treatments. The students exchanged amused glances, and a few stifled chuckles escaped into the air. The teacher's analogy seemed to fall flat, leaving behind a sense of awkwardness that permeated the room. 
It was clear that he was struggling to articulate a coherent explanation, and his attempt had only highlighted his uncertainty. As the room erupted in laughter, even the teacher couldn't help but crack a sheepish smile. Well, it appears I've encountered a formidable opponent in the realm of genetic variation, he admitted, his tone tinged with self-deprecation. Amidst the shared amusement, Vladimir's composed expression held a touch of humor, as if he had inadvertently turned the tables on the educator. The students' laughter echoed through the classroom, carrying with it a sense of camaraderie and the unexpected joy of witnessing a teacher momentarily stumble over his own subject matter. As the class drew to a close, the anticipation in the air was palpable. Vladimir sat in his seat, his thoughts consumed by a decision he had been turning over in his mind throughout the entire lecture. The moment had finally arrived, he was determined to take a step forward, to extend an invitation that carried the weight of both his desire and his fear of rejection. As Katerina gathered her belongings and prepared to leave the classroom, Vladimir's heart raced. He took a deep breath, his gaze focused on her as he mustered the courage to speak. Katerina, he began, his voice carrying a blend of hesitation and determination. She turned toward him, her expression a mix of curiosity and surprise. Yes, Vladimir? He hesitated for a moment, his nerves threatening to get the best of him. I was wondering if you would perhaps consider joining me for a romantic dinner? It would be an honor to spend more time with you outside of these walls. Katerina's eyes widened, her initial surprise giving way to a mixture of emotions. She hesitated, her thoughts racing as she recalled the recent tumultuous events that had shaken her world. The memory of John's outburst still lingered, casting a shadow of caution over her interactions. A flicker of emotion passed through Katerina's eyes as she mustered a soft smile. Vladimir, I appreciate your invitation. Truly. I do. But, you see, I have to help my mother with a very important dress order tonight for a famous client. Vladimir's heart sank as he heard her words, his hope colliding with the reality of her response. He managed a tight smile, his attempt at masking his disappointment. Of course, I understand. Family commitments are important. Thank you for understanding, Katerina said softly, her voice tinged with a mixture of gratitude and regret. Perhaps another time, when things aren't so hectic. The design was exquisite, a creation that spoke of her mother's talent and dedication to her craft. Unbeknownst to Katerina, this was the same dress Vladimir had commissioned, and her mother had chosen to keep the details a secret. As the final touches were placed, Katerina couldn't help but marvel at the dress's beauty. The intricate patterns and delicate details created a tapestry of elegance that left her breathless. Mother, this is truly remarkable, she said in awe her admiration evident in her voice. Her mother's eyes twinkled with pride, and she smiled warmly. Thank you, my dear. It warms my heart to see your appreciation for my work. Katerina's fingers gently traced the contours of the dress, her touch as delicate as the fabric itself. I can't imagine anyone wearing something so stunning. It's like a dream brought to life. A mischievous glint appeared in her mother's eyes as she suggested, 
Why don't you try it on, my dear? It would be a sight to behold. Katerina's face flushed slightly as she shook her head, her smile both embarrassed and sincere. Oh, mother, I couldn't. It's too grand, too extraordinary. If I put it on, I fear I'd become consumed by thoughts of how magnificent it is and how fortunate the person wearing it will be. The words hung in the air, a mix of humility and melancholy. Katerina's voice held a weight that went beyond the dress itself. It was a reflection of her own sense of self-worth and the challenges that life had bestowed upon her. As the conversation lingered, Katerina felt a lump forming in her throat. The image of the dress a symbol of beauty, grace, and the joys that seemed to elude her triggered a cascade of emotions. She excused herself with a whispered promise to return shortly, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. Alone in her room, Katerina let the tears fall freely, her emotions a torrent that had long been held back. She thought of her life a life that had been defined by sacrifice, hard work, and a resolute determination to support her family. The dress, as exquisite as it was, seemed to embody a world of beauty and opportunities that had always felt just beyond her grasp. Vladimir stood at the doorstep of Katerina's home, his attire exuding an air of elegance and charm. He had meticulously chosen his outfit, understanding the significance of the evening that lay ahead. In his hand, he held the exquisite dress that he had commissioned, a symbol of his desire to make a connection that transcended the ordinary. Vladimir stood at the doorstep of Katerina's home, his attire exuding an air of elegance and charm. He had meticulously chosen his outfit, understanding the significance of the evening that lay ahead. As the door opened, Katerina's mother greeted him with a warm smile, her eyes gleaming with a mixture of pride and hospitality. Mr. Vladimir, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Vladimir returned her smile with a gracious nod. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is mine. Their conversation flowed easily, a dance of polite exchanges that spoke of mutual respect and genuine appreciation. And then the moment arrived Vladimir's true purpose for being there. Mrs. Katerina, Vladimir began, his voice holding a blend of formality and earnestness. I've come to pick up and order a unique dress that I've commissioned for a relative of mine. Katerina's mother looked intrigued, her curiosity piqued by the mention of the special order. Ah, the dress. I'm glad you like my work, Mr. Vladimir. Vladimir's gaze met hers, a soft smile playing on his lips. Indeed. Your talent is remarkable. And speaking of the dress, I have a confession to make. He paused, his expression a mix of sincerity and vulnerability. The dress I've ordered is not for a relative. It's for Katerina. A surprised gasp escaped Katerina's mother, her eyes widening with realization. She exchanged a glance with Vladimir, a mixture of emotions playing across her features. For Katerina? But she doesn't know. Vladimir nodded, his gaze unwavering. I wanted to surprise her. I believe this dress would look exquisite on her a testament to your skill as a seamstress. As Katerina's mother processed this revelation, Vladimir continued, his voice carrying a blend of hope and earnestness. 
I also hope you would consider granting me the honor of accompanying Katerina this evening. I've arranged a special dinner, and I would be delighted if she could join me. Katerina's mother blinked, taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. She looked at Vladimir, seeing beyond the surface a man of manners, grace, and a rare sense of character that seemed to transcend the norms of the modern world. Her heart swelled with a mixture of appreciation and emotion, recognizing the rarity of such qualities. You know, Mr. Vladimir, she began, her voice softening with genuine warmth, it's been a long time since I've seen a young man with your level of manners and consideration. I believe you would be a wonderful companion for Katerina. Vladimir's eyes held a depth of gratitude that words could hardly convey. Thank you, Mrs. Katerina. Your words mean a great deal to me. Katerina's mother entered the room, a hint of faux disappointment in her expression. Katerina, I have some news about the dress. The client didn't seem to like it. Katerina's eyes widened in surprise. Oh no, mother, that's unfortunate. What happened? Her mother sighed, her tone conspiratorial. Well, this client they're a bit different. Some might say they're a little crazy. Katerina's curiosity was piqued. Crazy? How so? Her mother's lips curved into a playful smile. They didn't just not like it. They said it was too beautiful to wear and deserved someone truly special. Katerina's shock turned into a mix of disbelief and amusement. Are you serious? That's... Crazy! Her mother chuckled, and her gaze held a warmth that went beyond the playful banter. And you know what's even crazier? This crazy client specifically requested that the dress be saved for you. Katerina's jaw dropped, her emotions ranging from surprise to a hint of joy. For me? But why? Her mother's eyes sparkled with affection. Because, my dear, he said there's no one more special to wear it than you. They believe this dress was made to be worn by you, and that you'll make it truly come alive. Tears welled up in Katerina's eyes as she looked at her mother, feeling overwhelmed by the unexpected sentiment. Holding the dress close, Katerina saw not just the fabric and design, but the hopes, dreams, and affection that had been woven into its creation. And as she embraced the dress, she felt a renewed sense of self-worth and the promise of a beautiful future ahead. Dressed like a star on the red carpet, Katerina descended the stairs, her beauty shining brilliantly in Vladimir's eyes. He stood there, momentarily speechless in front of her radiant presence. The dress seemed to be tailor-made for her, its elegance accentuating her grace and charm. Vladimir extended his arm, a warm smile gracing his lips. You look absolutely stunning, Katerina. She blushed, her heart fluttering at his compliment, and took his arm. Together, they set out for a castle that had been reserved exclusively for them. Katerina was awestruck by the opulence of the surroundings, but she also hoped for a more relaxed evening. As they walked and talked, Michael, Vladimir's faithful assistant, had hidden himself in the bushes nearby, eager to assist his master in conquering Katerina's heart. 
He strained to listen to their conversation, ready to provide advice when needed. However, just as he was about to offer his insights, his heightened sense of hearing picked up a faint cry for help from a distance. Startled, he paused, trying to discern the source. Vladimir leaned in closer, the moonlight casting a gentle glow on his face. He was about to kiss Katerina when his body jerked, as if in response to some unseen force. His eyes flew open, a look of confusion and alarm crossing his features. In that moment, he let out a startled cry for help, a cry that echoed through the night. Katerina's amazement turned to bewilderment as Vladimir's sudden reaction caught her off guard. She watched, utterly perplexed, as he pulled away and seemed to be searching for something unseen. Vladimir, what's wrong? What happened? Vladimir's breath was ragged, his gaze still fixed on an invisible point. I, I heard a cry for help. It was so vivid, as if someone was in danger. Katerina's confusion deepened, her concern for him evident. A cry for help? But... I didn't hear anything. Vladimir shook his head, his features tense as he tried to shake off the remnants of the strange sensation. It must have been my heightened senses playing tricks on me. I apologize. Katerina. It seems I overreacted. She reached out to touch his arm, her eyes filled with empathy. Are you sure you're all right, Vladimir? He offered her a reassuring smile, though a sense of unease lingered in his eyes. Yes, I'm fine. I'm sorry for any alarm I might have caused. As the strange moment passed, Vladimir turned his attention back to Katerina, his gaze softening with a mix of apology and genuine interest. I'm sorry for the interruption, Katerina. Shall we continue our evening? Katerina offered a reassuring smile, her concern for him evident. Of course, Vladimir. Let's continue. Vladimir's lips curved into a thoughtful smile as he considered their options. So, Katerina, how would you like to spend the rest of our evening? We could explore the castle grounds, enjoy a quiet stroll by the moonlit lake, or perhaps even engage in some stargazing. And then, with a thoughtful look, Katerina added, you know, Vladimir, there's one other idea that's been on my mind. How about we take a leisurely walk around the castle grounds and try to spot some of the nocturnal animals that call this place home? Vladimir's brows lifted in surprise, a hint of intrigue in his expression. A nighttime walk to observe the nocturnal animals? That's a unique suggestion. Katerina. Her eyes sparkled with enthusiasm. I've always been fascinated by the creatures that come alive at night. It's like entering their secret world, and I think it could be an adventure in itself. Vladimir's smile grew more appreciative. I must admit, I haven't ventured into the realm of nocturnal animal watching before. But with you by my side, I'm up for trying something new. Katerina grinned, her heart warming at his willingness to embrace her idea. Great! It's settled, then. Let's take a walk and see what kind of fascinating creatures we can spot. 
As they strolled through the castle grounds, the moonlight casting a soft glow around them, Katerina and Vladimir's footsteps were accompanied by the rustling of leaves and the whisper of the night breeze. The air was alive with the magic of the nocturnal world. Their eyes turned upwards as they approached a magnificent tree, its branches a haven for two owls nestled closely together. Vladimir's voice held a touch of wonder as he pointed them out. Look, Katerina, two owls perched side by side. They're a symbol of faithful companionship in the avian world. Katerina's gaze followed his direction, a smile playing on her lips. Owls are truly fascinating creatures. Their loyalty to each other is inspiring. Vladimir nodded, his expression thoughtful. Indeed. And did you know that swans are also renowned for their devotion? They form strong bonds with their mates and often mate for life, symbolizing eternal love. Katerina's eyes sparkled with curiosity. Swans and owls, two different birds, yet both known for their unwavering commitment. It's amazing how the natural world can teach us so much about love and connection. Vladimir's gaze softened as he looked at her. Nature has its own way of imparting lessons to us, if we're willing to listen. Katerina's fingers lightly brushed against his, the gentle contact a reminder of their own growing connection. And sometimes, just like those owls and swans, we find ourselves on a path we never expected, but one that feels right. Vladimir's smile was warm and genuine. Indeed, Katerina. Our journey may be filled with unexpected twists, but I believe that every step we take brings us closer to something beautiful. As they continued their walk through the castle grounds, the serene atmosphere was suddenly shattered by the piercing cries of an animal in distress. Katerina's heart raced, her instincts urging her to investigate. Vladimir, did you hear that? We need to see what's happening. Vladimir's expression turned concerned, and without hesitation, he followed Katerina's lead. They hurried towards the source of the commotion, the urgency in their steps matching the urgency of the situation. They arrived at a clearing to witness a heartbreaking sight, a wounded doe surrounded by a pack of fierce wolves. Katerina's gasp of shock and sympathy was barely audible as she took in the scene before her. The fear in the doe's eyes was mirrored in Katerina's own, her heart aching for the helpless animal. She turned to Vladimir, her voice shaking as she whispered, What can we do? She's outnumbered. Vladimir's gaze was steady his mind racing to find a solution. He could feel Katerina's fear and compassion, and he knew that something had to be done. We can't stand by and watch, Katerina. We have to help somehow. As Katerina's eyes darted around, seeking a way to intervene, she noticed a tree that provided a vantage point. Maybe we can distract the wolves somehow. I'll climb that tree and make noise to draw their attention away from the doe. Vladimir nodded in agreement, his admiration for her courage evident. Go carefully, Katerina. I'll be ready to assist if needed. Katerina's heart raced as she climbed the tree, her determination overcoming her fear. From her elevated position, she began to make loud noises, hoping to divert the wolf's attention away from the wounded doe. And then, as if by some magic, 
the wolves seem to disperse, their menacing presence vanishing into thin air. Katerina's heart raced even faster as she scanned the area, searching for any sign of the predators. As the moments passed, Katerina's breaths grew labored, her body tensing in anticipation. When she finally mustered the courage to look down, her eyes widened in disbelief. There, in place of the wolves, stood Vladimir, his presence calming and reassuring. But as her eyes locked onto him, a realization slowly began to dawn upon her. She saw something in his eyes, a depth that went beyond the ordinary, a hunger that seemed otherworldly. The pieces of the puzzle started to fit together, and a truth she had never considered began to take shape. Vladimir's transformation left Katerina awestruck, her voice barely a whisper. Vladimir, you. You're not like us. He met her gaze, his expression a mixture of vulnerability and resignation. No. Katerina. I'm not. The revelation was a heavy weight upon her heart, a mixture of fear and curiosity swirling within her. In that moment, the connection they had built, the tender moments they had shared, all took on a new dimension. As the night wrapped around them once more, the enchantment of the evening was shattered, replaced by a new reality that was as captivating as it was bewildering. The course of their story had taken an unexpected turn, and Katerina found herself standing on the precipice of a truth that would forever change her perception of the world around her. As the weight of the revelation settled in the air between them, Vladimir's heart raced with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation. He knew that the truth he had just unveiled could change everything between them. His thoughts raced, and he mentally rehearsed the words he wished to say to her. I understand if you don't want to see me again, he began in his mind, his thoughts flowing with sincerity. But first, you must know that I love you sincerely, and I would be the happiest if you gave me a chance. As the weight of the revelation settled in the air between them, Vladimir's heart raced with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation. He knew that the truth he had just unveiled could change everything between them. His thoughts raced, and he mentally rehearsed the words he wished to say to her. I understand if you don't want to see me again, he began in his mind, his thoughts flowing with sincerity. But first, you must know that I love you sincerely, and I would be the happiest if you gave me a chance. However, the words remained unspoken, trapped within the confines of his mind. The silence stretched between them, an unspoken barrier that neither of them seemed willing to breach. Katerina's gaze was unreadable, her expression a mix of emotions that Vladimir couldn't quite decipher. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as they both grappled with the truth that lay before them. Vladimir's heart ached, his inner turmoil mirroring the chaos of his immortal existence. He had bared his soul to her, revealing a part of himself that he had hidden from the world for centuries. As the silence continued, Vladimir couldn't help but wonder what was going through Katerina's mind. Did she see him as a monster? Did she fear him, as he had feared himself for so long? Or was there a glimmer of understanding, a spark of compassion that could bridge the gap between their worlds? His thoughts were a whirlwind of uncertainty, and as he looked at Katerina, he saw a mixture of shock and contemplation in her eyes. Did she need time to process this revelation? 
Would she ever be able to accept him for who he truly was? In the wake of the revelation, Vladimir heeded Michael's advice and chose to give Katerina space. He understood the magnitude of what he had shared and recognized the importance of allowing her time to process her feelings and thoughts. The days that followed were marked by a mixture of hope and anxiety as he grappled with the uncertainty of their future. Katerina, on the other hand, found herself in a tumultuous whirlwind of emotions. The truth about Vladimir's nature had initially been a shock that shook the very foundation of her reality. She had felt a deep connection to him, a connection that transcended the ordinary, and the revelation had both confirmed and challenged that connection. There were moments of anger and frustration as Katerina confronted the magnitude of what it meant to be involved with a vampire. She questioned his intentions, wondering if everything she had felt had been influenced by some sort of magical manipulation. Doubt gnawed at her heart, tearing at the fabric of the emotions she had developed for him. The internal struggle was overwhelming, as strong feelings clashed with newfound doubts. She grappled with the fear that her affection for him had been manufactured somehow, that her heart had been led astray by some hidden enchantment. The very foundation of her emotions had been shaken, leaving her in a state of inner turmoil. Vladimir, for his part, felt the weight of Katerina's internal battles keenly. He longed to bridge the gap between them, to offer reassurance and understanding, but he knew that this was a journey she needed to undertake on her own terms. He questioned whether he should have revealed his true self to her at all, fearing that he had caused more harm than good. Yet, amidst the uncertainty and doubt, there was an undeniable truth that both Vladimir and Katerina carried with them, the moments they had shared were real. Their connection, their conversations, the laughter and the stolen glances were genuine expressions of their growing bond. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and cast long shadows across the landscape, Michael caught Vladimir just as he was preparing to leave for Katerina's house once again. His footsteps fell quietly, yet his presence was known to his vigilant master. Vladimir, Michael's voice broke the silence, his tone a mix of understanding and concern. Are you heading to Katerina's place again? Vladimir turned, his expression a mix of surprise and a hint of guilt. Ah, Michael. Yes, I was thinking of seeing her. Michael's eyes bore into Vladimir's, his gaze unwavering. You've been going there quite often lately, haven't you? Vladimir's attempts to mask his intentions with vague explanations had not gone unnoticed by his astute assistant. He hesitated, his mind racing for a suitable response. Well, you know, I have some business in the area. Michael's lips curved into a knowing smile. Business, you say? Is that what you call it? Vladimir sighed, realizing that his attempts to deceive Michael were futile. All right, Michael. You caught me. Yes, I've been going to see Katerina. Michael's demeanor softened, and he stepped closer to Vladimir. Vladimir, I understand that you care about her deeply. But you need to be careful. You remember Casper and Louis, the ancient vampires? They've heard about your return, and they might have plans. Vladimir's brows furrowed as he absorbed Michael's words. Casper and Louis were ancient adversaries from his past, 
vampires who had crossed paths with him before. Memories of past encounters flooded his mind, and a sense of unease settled within him. Are they a threat? Vladimir asked, his voice laced with concern. Michael shook his head, his expression reassuring. No, I don't believe they're a direct threat. I've encountered them recently, and they're not as powerful as they once were. I made sure they knew that this territory is off-limits. Vladimir's tension eased slightly at Michael's words. The assurance that his assistant had taken care of the situation brought a sense of relief. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate your watchfulness. Michael placed a hand on Vladimir's shoulder, offering a supportive squeeze. You've dealt with them before, and you're more than capable of handling any challenge they might bring. Just remember to stay calm and focused. Vladimir nodded, gratitude in his eyes. I will, Michael. And thank you for looking out for me. As Vladimir and Michael were about to head towards the location where the two ancient vampires were rumored to be, their intentions were abruptly interrupted by the distant sounds of distress and the ominous sight of smoke emanating from Katerina's house. Fear gripped Vladimir's heart, his thoughts immediately turning towards the safety of the woman he loved for. Their plans forgotten, Vladimir and Michael exchanged a worried glance before rushing towards Katerina's house, their vampire speed allowing them to cover the distance in an instant. Dread coiled in Vladimir's chest as he envisioned the worst scenarios, his mind racing with concern for Katerina's well-being. Meanwhile, in a dimly lit bar, John drowned his anger and frustration in his drink. He lamented to his friends about his inability to convince Katerina to reconcile with him. He believed he was the best choice for her, someone who had always been there and understood her. The removal of himself from her life felt unjust, and he was determined not to give up without a fight. As John vented his frustrations, one of his friends interjected with unexpected information. Hey, I saw Katerina a few days ago. She was dressed so elegantly, leaving on someone's arm, and they drove away in a luxurious car. John's heart sank as the words hit him, a mix of shock and jealousy surging through his veins. He couldn't ignore the implication that Katerina was moving on, and he couldn't bear the thought of losing her to someone else. The idea gnawed at him, fueling his determination to confront the situation head-on. With a determined expression, John turned to his two friends. We need to find out who she was with. I won't let someone else take her away from me without a fight. His friends exchanged glances, sensing John's seriousness and the turmoil in his heart. They agreed to help him, and together, they embarked on a mission to uncover the truth behind Katerina's unexpected outing. The night had taken an unexpected turn as the young group stumbled towards Katerina's family's tailoring workshop, their state of intoxication evident in their unsteady steps. John, fueled by alcohol and his determination to win Katerina back, led the way with a mix of bravado and inebriation. Inside the workshop, amidst the rows of mannequins donning elegant dresses, John starts talking to a plastic mannequin as if he were talking to Katerina. He gazed at the silent figures before him, imagining them as an audience for his carefully prepared speech. His words slurred slightly, but his conviction remained strong. Look at me, 
Katerina, John declared, his voice louder than he had intended. I'm strong, I'm perfect. Who else could be better for you? With a self-assured smile, he flexed his muscles, attempting to emphasize his point. The mannequins remained still, their frozen expressions indifferent to his display. Remember, Katerina, he continued, his speech becoming a mixture of genuine emotions and alcohol-induced bravado. I've always been there for you. I've supported you. And let's not forget, it was because of me that you will became a doctor. He leaned forward, a dramatic gesture that made his friends stifle their laughter. And what about when I got sick, Katerina? John exclaimed, his voice filled with mock gravity. Remember that time? You nursed me back to health. You were my hero. You discovered your mission in life, becoming a doctor, all thanks to me. His words seemed to echo in the quiet workshop, the absurdity of his claims contrasting with the reality of their history. Unbeknownst to John, his friends exchanged amused glances, silently acknowledging the comical nature of his grand proclamation. John's attempt to win back Katerina's affections had taken a rather unexpected and theatrical turn. Amidst the laughter and camaraderie, John's determination to win Katerina's heart showed no signs of waning. With a flourish, he produced a bundle of romantic candles, holding them up for all to see. His voice was filled with a mix of pride and humor as he addressed his friends. Look at this, everyone! John exclaimed, a mischievous grin on his face. Behold the romantic arsenal I've brought for Katerina. Prepare to be amazed by my unparalleled romantic prowess and, let's be honest, intellect. It's a package deal. His friends chuckled, thoroughly entertained by John's audacious confidence and his comedic approach to romance. John's self-assuredness was infectious, drawing them into the absurd yet endearing scheme. John turned his attention to his friends, his enthusiasm contagious. All right, my loyal crew, let's get creative. We're going to arrange these candles into the shape of a heart. And we'll light them up quickly before she descends to us. With an air of theatricality, John and his friends gathered around the candles, their hands a flurry of activity as they arranged the candles into the desired shape. Their laughter mixed with the flickering glow of the candles, casting a warm and playful ambience in the otherwise quiet workshop. Voila! John exclaimed, admiring their handiwork. A masterpiece of romance and intellect. As John's enthusiasm surged, fueled by both determination and a touch of intoxication, his hands seemed to have a mind of their own, acting independently from his racing thoughts. With each attempt to strike a match and ignite the candles, his hands fumbled, the small wooden sticks slipping from his grip and landing on the floor. Frustration grew like a simmering storm within him, and his movements became more frantic. In his haste, the matches scattered across the room, their tiny flames extinguished before they even had a chance to spark. Panic mixed with irritation, driving him to hurl the stubborn matches away, his actions an exasperated gesture born of his mounting exasperation. As the discarded matches lay strewn across the room, a strange realization began to dawn on him. An odd warmth filled the air, 
and a flicker of light danced at the edges of his vision. His eyes widened in shock as he turned to see that the discarded matches had ignited a small fire, flames curling and spreading with surprising speed. In a matter of moments, what had started as a collection of futile attempts had blossomed into a dangerous blaze that licked at the edges of the room. John's eyes widened, his mouth opening in stunned horror as he comprehended the magnitude of the situation. He turned to his friends, his voice tinged with panic. We need to get out of here, now. Two of his friends managed to scramble towards the exit, their faces a mix of alarm and urgency. But John found himself trapped in the midst of the growing inferno, their movements hindered by the encroaching flames and the suffocating smoke. Fear knotted in John's throat as he struggled to move, his limbs seemingly refusing to respond to his desperate commands. The situation had escalated beyond his control, transforming a light-hearted attempt at romance into a dangerous predicament. Amidst the chaos and the flames, the unexpected turn of events had thrown them all into a perilous struggle for survival. The workshop, once a setting for comedic gestures and heartfelt declarations, had become a battleground against the fire's relentless advance, a stark reminder of the unpredictable twists that life could take. The chaotic scene unfolded with a frightening intensity as the fire blazed through the tailoring workshop. Katerina jolted awake, coughing and choking on the acrid smoke that had filled her room. Panic surged as she realized the danger and urgency of the situation. She scrambled to the window, desperate to escape the suffocating inferno. Help! Somebody, please help! Katerina's voice wavered as she shouted, her cries cutting through the crackling of the flames. Fear gripped her heart as she struggled to find her parents amidst the chaos. Soon, the wailing sirens of a fire truck pierced the night, their urgent notes a beacon of hope. But as the firefighters rushed to the scene, the heavy smoke proved overwhelming, causing two of them to collapse. It was then that Vladimir, swift and determined, stepped forward. He and Michael sprang into action, their supernatural abilities granting them the strength and resilience needed to navigate the treacherous environment. Michael quickly found Katerina's parents and escorted them to a place of refuge, while Vladimir made his way towards Katerina and brought her to safety. Amidst the chaos, something struck Vladimir, an oddly familiar scent that wafted through the smoke-filled air. It was a scent he couldn't forget, for it had been linked to a pivotal moment in his own history. As he rushed to save John and his intoxicated friend from the burning building, a realization dawned on him, the scent belonged to the very person who had once unwittingly pulled the dagger from his chest, awakening him from centuries of slumber. With a determined resolve, Vladimir seized the opportunity amidst the fiery turmoil. In a swift and daring maneuver, he navigated the flames and debris, his supernatural abilities lending him an advantage in the perilous environment. Despite the challenges posed by John's intoxicated state, Vladimir managed to extricate him from the building's grip and guide him to safety. As they emerged from the smoke-filled chaos, Katerina's family stood in shock and disbelief. Gratitude mixed with devastation as they realized the extent of the destruction that had befallen their livelihood and home. The fire had taken everything they held dear. Amidst the aftermath, a glimmer of hope emerged as Michael, following Vladimir's plan, offered a solution. 
The devastated family was given the chance to temporarily relocate to a house that had been carefully chosen for them. It was a place with a history, an imposing house like a small mansion, once inhabited by Michael's own family, as Vladimir advised him to say. The gesture was both generous and strategic, providing them a safe haven while allowing Vladimir to oversee their protection more closely. The family's suffering was swiftly alleviated, aided in large part by Michael's unwavering support and assistance. It was a place with a history, an imposing house like a small mansion, once inhabited by Michael's own family, as Vladimir advised him to say. The gesture was both generous and strategic, providing them a safe haven while allowing Vladimir to oversee their protection more closely. The family's suffering was swiftly alleviated, aided in large part by Michael's unwavering support and assistance. With his help, the family found their footing once again, and the revival of their business exceeded all expectations. The strategically chosen location in the city's most exclusive district ensured a steady stream of clientele, leading to the flourishing of the once struggling enterprise. While the full extent of their newfound prosperity remained a mystery to them, the family embraced every moment with gratitude and wonder. Even the closets in every room overflowed with exquisite garments, each one carefully selected and chossed to perfection by Vladimir, but they did not know that. Their lives had been transformed in ways they could hardly comprehend, and they relished the joys and opportunities that came their way. In a state of growing unease, Vladimir searched for Michael, eager for any news about Katerina's wellness. However, Michael seemed to have vanished, leaving Vladimir in a state of heightened anxiety. His concern only deepened when he reached Katerina's home, only to find it empty, devoid of any sign of her presence. Dread settled in, and the darkest of his fears began to take shape. A chilling realization dawned upon him, Katerina and Michael had fallen into the clutches of the two ancient vampires, Casper and Louis. Without hesitation, he knew what he must do. He couldn't allow his loved ones to remain in the hands of these soulless beings. Driven by a mixture of urgency and determination, Vladimir set out to rescue Katerina and Michael. Yet, his rescue mission soon took an unexpected turn. As he approached the location, he found himself ensnared in a trap designed by the cunning vampires. The element of surprise was on their side, and armed with modern weaponry that Vladimir had not anticipated, they managed to capture him. In a cruel twist of fate, Vladimir found himself at their mercy, his supernatural powers rendered powerless in the face of their strategic advantage. His heart raced as he grappled with the realization that his loved ones were still in danger, and he was now trapped in a perilous situation. In a chilling display of malevolent strategy, the vampires orchestrated a grim gathering, their sinister intentions laid bare before Vladimir's eyes. The air was thick with tension as the ominous atmosphere seemed to close in around them. Vladimir's heart pounded in his chest as he assessed the dire circumstances that had enveloped him, Katerina, and Michael. Casper and Louis, their ancient eyes gleaming with diabolical malice, moved with calculated precision. They seemed to relish the power they held over their captives, each movement dripping with cruel intent. The vampires' voices laced with an eerie harmony of anticipation, they revealed their sinister plan. We have brought you all together, dear Vladimir, Casper hissed, his voice laced with a chilling undertone. 
You shall witness the destruction of those you hold dear, and you shall be the instrument of their demise. Vladimir's breath caught in his throat, his heart sinking at the realization of their sinister intent. The vampire's depraved strategy was clear they intended to force him to assist in the destruction of his beloved companions. Fear and rage battled within him as he struggled to find a way out of this nightmarish scenario. With a sudden, swift motion that sent shivers down Vladimir's spine, Louis closed in on Katerina, his fingers grazing the delicate skin of her neck. The proximity of danger was palpable, a haunting reminder of their vulnerability. You see, Vladimir, Louis sneered, his voice dripping with malicious satisfaction. One movement, and she becomes a pawn in your own undoing. Beside Katerina, Michael's expression twisted with a mixture of defiance and fear. His captors had devised a gruesome fate for him, the removal of his hands, rendering him powerless to ever help again. The diabolical nature of their plan sent shivers down the spine, a cruel reminder of the vampire's intent to break their spirits and strip them of their strength. As the dire situation seemed to close in around them, Vladimir's mind raced for a way out. The weight of responsibility bore heavily upon his shoulders the lives of Katerina and Michael hung in the balance, and the odds of a successful escape were minimal at best. With a heavy heart and a determination to protect his loved ones, he seized a desperate glimmer of hope. Summoning his courage, Vladimir's voice was steady as he addressed the vampires with a tone of calculated resolve. If you release Katerina and Michael unharmed, I am prepared to offer myself in exchange for their freedom. His words hung in the air, a moment of tense silence enveloping them all. The vampires regarded him with a mix of amusement and intrigue, their ancient eyes gleaming with a sinister light. Casper's lips curled into a chilling smile, while Lewis's expression remained inscrutable. You offer yourself as a bargaining chip? Casper mused, his tone laced with dark amusement. And what assurance do we have that you won't attempt to retaliate or escape once they are free? Vladimir's gaze locked onto Casper's, his sincerity radiating from his eyes. My word is my bond. I will willingly submit to your terms and ensure that no harm befalls them. In return, you release them and spare their lives. The tense negotiation hung in the air, the outcome uncertain as the vampires exchanged a silent, calculating glance. Vladimir's heart raced, knowing that his offer was a dangerous gamble, but one he was willing to make to protect those he loved for. After a heavy pause, Lewis finally spoke, his voice dripping with a sinister edge. Very well, Vladimir. Your willingness to sacrifice yourself for their freedom intrigues us. We shall release them and spare their lives. For now. But remember, your fate now rests in our hands. Freed from the clutches of the ancient vampires, Michael and Katerina found themselves alone in the forest, the cool night air swirling around them. The gravity of their situation weighed heavily on their minds as they shared a moment of respite beneath the moonlit canopy. Katerina's gaze was unwavering as she turned to Michael, her voice tinged with a mixture of urgency and determination. Michael, we can't just go back to our old lives after all this. I've seen the dangers, the darkness that lurks in this world. I can't stand by idly, waiting to be saved. 
I want to be able to protect myself, to fight alongside Vladimir. Michael's brows furrowed as he considered her words, his heart conflicted. Katerina, becoming a vampire is a profound and irreversible decision. It's not something to be taken lightly. She met his gaze with unwavering determination. I know it's a big step, Michael. But think about it, we could be a team, stronger together. And it's not like I'd be alone in this. Vladimir has lived as a vampire for centuries. He could guide me, show me how to navigate this new world. Michael's expression softened, his concern for Katerina evident in his eyes. I understand your desire to be strong, Katerina. But becoming a vampire means leaving behind the life you know, facing challenges you can't even imagine right now. Are you prepared for that? Katerina's resolve remained unshaken as she spoke, her voice filled with conviction. I've thought about this, Michael. I want to be with Vladimir, to stand by his side. And if I have to become like him to do that, then I'm willing to make that sacrifice. It's not a big enough sacrifice when you love like I do. Michael's heart ached for his friend, torn between his loyalty to Vladimir and his concern for Katerina's well-being. He placed a gentle hand on her shoulder, his voice filled with both compassion and caution. Katerina, this isn't a decision to be rushed into. Take some time to think about it, to weigh the consequences. Becoming a vampire is a choice that will shape the rest of your existence. Katerina's resolve remained unyielding, her desire to stand alongside Vladimir and protect him from any threat overwhelming any doubts she might have had. As the moon cast its silvery glow upon them, Michael took a deep breath, his features a mixture of apprehension and determination. Katerina, he began, his voice steady, if this is truly what you want, then I'll honor your choice. But remember, becoming a vampire is a one-way journey. Once the transformation is complete, there's no going back. Katerina nodded, her eyes reflecting her unwavering determination. I understand, Michael. I'm willing to accept the consequences of my decision. With a solemn nod, Michael stepped closer to Katerina. He placed a hand gently on her shoulder, his touch both reassuring and poignant. Before we proceed, I want you to be absolutely certain. This will change your entire existence, from the way you see the world to how you interact with it. Katerina looked into Michael's eyes, her voice steady and resolute. I've never been sure of anything in my life, Michael. I want to be with Vladimir, to protect him, and to face whatever challenges come our way. Michael nodded, his expression a mix of respect and empathy. Very well, Katerina. I'll guide you through the process, but remember, it won't be easy. You'll face trials, both physical and emotional. But if this is your choice, then I'll be by your side every step of the way. With a final glance of determination, Katerina nodded. Michael's hand on her shoulder felt like a lifeline, a connection to the world she was leaving behind. As the transformation began, she felt an overwhelming surge of power, a newfound sense of strength coursing through her veins. The process was intense, 
her body undergoing a profound metamorphosis, and yet, through the pain and uncertainty, she held on to her conviction. When it was over, Katerina stood there as a newly transformed vampire, her eyes shining with a mix of wonder and determination. Michael, by her side, offered a reassuring smile. Welcome to your new life, Katerina. We have much to learn and discover together. As the moon cast its eerie light upon the scene, Katerina's determination burned brighter than ever. Michael, she said firmly, we need a plan to defeat those vampires. We can't let them continue to threaten us. Michael nodded, his expression serious. You're right. We can't let them get away with this. Katerina, let's use their own tactics against them, Katerina proposed, her eyes gleaming with determination. I'll pretend to be wounded, vulnerable, and alone. They won't be able to resist the temptation of fresh blood. As the plan took shape, Katerina took on her role with utmost commitment. She allowed herself to appear weakened, leaning on a makeshift crutch, and she even let a few drops of fake blood stain her clothing. Her acting skills were put to the test as she feigned vulnerability and fear. Meanwhile, the ancient vampires, Casper and Louis, smelling the blood, they quickly appear near Katerina. We did what we promised, Casper hissed. It's not our fault if she got hurt. We didn't lay a hand on her. Their words were laced with malevolence as they greedily advanced towards Katerina, their eyes glinting with an unsettling hunger. But before they could get any closer, Michael sprung into action. He attacked them with swift ferocity, armed with the weapons that had been discarded in the room. The battle raged on, the clash of metal against metal echoing through the night. With each swing of her weapon and every well-timed dodge, Katerina displayed an incredible aptitude for combat. Her senses were heightened, allowing her to anticipate her opponent's moves and react with uncanny speed. She was amazed by the newfound strength that surged through her veins, the power that she now possessed as a vampire. As she clashed with the ancient vampires, her confidence grew with every successful strike. She felt an exhilarating rush, a connection to the primal instincts that now coursed through her being. It was as if a dormant part of her had awakened, and she embraced it fully. Michael, who was no stranger to fighting as a vampire, was impressed by her natural aptitude. It was clear that she was not just fighting for the sake of the battle, but for the safety of her loved ones and her newfound identity. In the midst of the fight, Vladimir was finally freed from his restraints. Shock washed over him as he saw Katerina standing there, transformed into a vampire herself. He rushed to her side, his voice a mixture of worry and scolding. Katerina, what have you done? Katerina met Vladimir's gaze, her expression resolute. Vladimir, it was my choice. I couldn't stand by and let you and Michael face this danger alone. I want to be with you, to fight alongside you. Vladimir's eyes searched hers, a mixture of concern and affection evident in his gaze. I understand your reasons, but becoming a vampire is a serious decision. Your life will never be the same. Katerina approached Vladimir, her eyes locking onto his. Vladimir, I know this is a lot to take in, 
but I hope you understand that my feelings for you are eternal. My choice to become a vampire was driven by my love for you and my desire to protect what we have. Vladimir and Katerina found themselves standing close, their eyes locked in a deep, unspoken understanding. The tension of the battle had ignited something within them, a fire that burned with both passion and emotion. With a faint smile, Vladimir's voice was a gentle whisper amidst the night's gentle breeze. Eternal love, you said? What if we were to seal it with an eternal kiss? His words hung in the air, carrying an unspoken invitation that Katerina felt deep within her heart. Without a moment's hesitation, she closed the distance between them, her lips meeting Vladimir's in a kiss that spoke volumes of their shared journey, their struggles, and the connection that had grown between them. Their kiss was intense, a merging of two souls that had braved the darkness and found light in each other. Love and longing intertwined, igniting a spark that blazed brighter than any star in the sky. The world around them seemed to fade away, leaving only the touch of their lips and the promise of forever. As they finally broke the kiss, their eyes remained locked, a silent exchange of emotions passing between them. Katerina's cheeks flushed, her heart racing, and Vladimir's gaze held a depth of emotion that words could never fully convey. Perhaps eternity is a journey we can embark on together, Vladimir whispered, his voice carrying a mixture of tenderness and hope. Katerina smiled, her fingers gently caressing his cheek. I believe you're right. And as long as we face it together, there's nothing we can't overcome. Hand in hand, their fingers intertwined, Vladimir and Katerina looked out into the starlit night, ready to face whatever challenges the eternal journey of love might bring. Their bond had been tested and strengthened, and with the taste of an eternal kiss still lingering, they knew that their love was a force that could conquer any darkness and shine brilliantly for all time. As the moon continued to cast its glow upon them, Katerina and Vladimir stood united, their love and resilience shining brightly in the face of adversity. Their journey was far from over, but they faced the challenges ahead with the knowledge that they could overcome anything as long as they were together.